Hello, welcome to the Africa Today podcast from the BBC. I'm Bola Mosuru. Now, Africa has the highest number of young people under the age of 30 in the world, more than 65% in fact. Well, many unemployed are involved in small businesses to earn a living. So imagine how measures such as lockdown or restrictions on movement and travel to restrict the spread of COVID-19 are affecting them. Well, one person for whom this has become a daily question is Aya Chebi. This Tunisian is the special envoy to the African Union. I asked what she's been advocating. We've been doing a lot of um, tweet chats uh, live. I have a live uh, in two hours um, on Instagram using all different platforms. And I've also been convening the virtual African Union youth uh, consultation on COVID-19 for a collective youth response. So the last two weeks, we convened about 10 consultations, um, reached 150 youth from 40 countries, and basically creating this platform for young people to have a collective response, but also to share experiences on what young people on the front line are doing in different countries and stand in solidarity with each other, which I think Africa is doing very well so far in response to the pandemic. So my role is really to just put youth central to the response, but also post COVID-19, because the impacts of of this uh, crisis will be enormous on young people. And when we talk about, you know, the fact that a large proportion of our continent are made up of youth and the restrictions that have been put in place in so many of our countries are affecting the youth disproportionately. Um, Already we have high, high unemployment on the continent. So what kind of solutions or what kind of things have you been discussing as the youth, even before the pandemic, uh, African economies were supposed to generate uh, 12 million uh, jobs for youth entering the workforce, but generate only 3 million. Um, and so many young people are in the informal sector, and, and these lockdowns and home states means that African youth who hustle and survive uh, on insecure jobs would not be unemployed. Um, but there we see a lot of, uh, first of all, African Union uh, response, a collective uh, response in solidarity. And the AU and Africa CDC launched the Africa COVID-19 Response Fund. It's a public-private partnership to implement a pan-African self-reliance uh, strategy and now already raising an initial 150 million US dollars, but aiming for a 400 million US dollars. But I think also on on country level, we see a lot of um, government response that is focusing on small businesses during the outbreak and how to um, establish funds to boost economic activities and affected businesses, especially young people. Young people have been in these consultations saying a lot about youth in formal settlements, Uh, refugee youth, migrant youth. So there is a lot of layers of marginalization among the youth population that also we need to um, take care of. It's all very well having, you know, a number of, you know, many people will commend you for having, piloting a number of discussions. But how much of it this is actually acted on? The AU is playing a role that we have not seen maybe on other continents. So putting a fund together, putting a joint Africa continental strategy early in February, actually, When we had just few cases from Senegal and South Africa, the Africa CDC convened health ministers and more than 30 showed up uh, and put together a joint strategy and established an Africa task force for coronavirus. So there is a daily coordination with member states uh, at the policy level, uh, a daily briefing, uh, collecting of data that is training to member states and building their capacities, the redistribution of kits, uh, test kits and a gear for for protection. I think the role of young people at this time is to really unite around our agenda and say, what what do we really want? Because this is not just about a health crisis. This is about how young people have not designed the systems that we now are suffering from, how young people have not played a role in decision making of where we arrive today. So there are a lot of advocacy with member states on including young professionals, young scientists, um, young people who are already health workers who could, in this time, take on leadership and be on the front line of, of decision making as well. And she's Aya Chebi. She's the AU Special Envoy for Youth.